Today as yesterday, you are standing, standing like a walking tree. You walk, you walk without respite. Out of breath, thirsty, tired, hurt, but valiant. Your heart says to you, hold your word and walk. At the end of the hill, in the village paths, cries of terror resound like the roar of a storm. Here and there, the red earth shelters lifeless bodies. In the houses, nothing moves. Nature is in survival mode, but determined as hope, the march does not stop. Despite the machete that cuts, love does not want to die. Over there, on the horizon, a drum sound motivates the march. All eyes full of hope are swirled up into heaven. Could it be the expected announcement of the land of milk and honey? Peals of laughter ring everywhere to mark a new birth. I hear the steps of the dance of joy pounding the ground. Umugenza gukunda agukura mukaga kagushira mubandi umwizero kaboneka imana ikuhira yemwe mwamaritsa sama Nukuvuga ngo narumva nti What I mean by this is that if someone loves you, he helps you to get out of bad thoughts and get back together with others so that hope is reborn and God adds his blessing. The 1960s will mark the history of several African countries. Most of them will become sovereign and the proclamation of independence will trigger an awakening throughout the continent. Several countries in the Great Lakes region will be affected by this movement and desire for independence. In 1962, Rwanda, Burundi and Uganda became independent states. This period will lead to joy and sorrow with dramas followed by euphoria. We are in Burundi, a country located south of Rwanda east of the Democratic Republic of Congo. This small country will experience ethnic clashes after the assassination in 1961 of Prince Louis Guagazori, both Prime Minister and father of independence. This ethnic divide led to a coup d'etat in 1969, which fortunately failed but which was again with this objective in mind. It was mainly organized by the so-called Tutsis, and that was to further anger the Hutu leaders, so that in 1972, the first genocide of Tutsis and Hutus took place. There are those who say it's a Hutu genocide. I don't think so. I saw that there were Tutsis who died because they were Tutsis and because of this quest for power, just as I unfortunately also saw Hutus who died because they were Hutus. And that's where I lost both my father and my little brother, together with 50 other family members. I was born to a Hutu father and a Tutsi mother. 
1972, when my father died during the events that took away many people at that time, I was at boarding school. When I arrived home, that's when I learned that my father had died. I was with my little brother, who was studying at the junior seminary, and we started to cry. We were told, you mustn't cry, it's forbidden. Because if the military hear you crying for someone like him, they will kill you too. The people who disappeared at that time were given a name. They were called Abamenja, so we couldn't mourn the Bamenja. We couldn't grieve. We couldn't have masses said it was forbidden. It was a great frustration for us. I had already learned the lesson by seeing how people lived in division, leading people to go astray by killing their friends for no reason. Even though I had lost loved ones, I understood that it is not ethnicity that kills, but bad governance. If you lead someone up the wrong path, his heart becomes evil. Every Burundian child must learn that, rather than kill an ethnic group, he must love his neighbor who fights with him, regardless of his ethnicity. To share her passion for traditional music, Christine, nicknamed Mama Africa, founded the Inhatana Cultural Club with some young people. In this club, young people learn about the values of a Burundian culture, as their motto indicates unity, dignity and culture. <laughs> Coming from different parts of the city of Bujumbura, Inhatana club members meet twice a week to learn new dance techniques. For 10 years now, the fruits of their commitment have given concrete results in terms of consolidating peace and searching for unity. When I first joined the Intantana Club, our meeting took place in Kanyosha over a meal. Our second meeting took place in my parents' house in Katunguru. But when they came to this neighborhood, which is located in the city of Kamenge, I was surprised because of past ethnic clashes. A person living in Ungagara will tell you, for instance, I cannot go to Kamenge. A person from Kamenge will tell you, I will never set foot in Ungagara even if I was threatened with death. We in the Intertana Club have already overcome these things. <laughs> But within Intertana, the inhabitants of all these neighborhoods come together. We bring them together. Our activities create this framework of reconciliation through song. We sing about peace. A song we composed is called Vugana, Speak to Each Other, which was used a lot for the peace agreements in Arusha. <laughs> It says lack of dialogue causes nasty rumors. Talk to each other to avoid them. Dialogue can kill or save. Talk to each other because dialogue is the real value. We know that the crises in Burundi are the consequences of this lack of dialogue. The commitment of Burundian artists will create bridges for encounters and dialogue through dance, music and theatre. In 1981, Marie-Louise Sibazuri created a theatre company with Burundians, Rwandians and Congolese. The troupe travelled to the neighbourhoods and towns to perform plays on the subject of reconciliation and peaceful coexistence. 
With the war, there was what they called the balkanization of the neighborhoods. There were areas where the Hutus could not enter and other districts where the Tutsis were barred from entering. So we asked ourselves, do we stop playing? We didn't want to stop passing on our message when it was just the moment when we felt the population needed it the most. The series, which title means The Neighbor is Part of My Family, is a real success throughout the country. The moral lesson of Ubuntu and unity between Tutsis and Utu touches Burundian population. Marie-Louise is inspired by daily life, the difficulties of neighborhood, people's attitudes during the period of ethnic conflict. She writes the love story of Bazumutima and Natalia. The two young people love each other, but they are not of the same ethnic group. I like acting, in the theatre or in the cinema, and I always get something out of it. Because they always say that every play has a message. And when you want to pass on a message to others, you have to pass it on to yourself first. Even in a play, when I start a rumor with a specific purpose, I have to apply it to myself first, so that I am not a troublemaker. Broadcast every Monday and Friday evening, the series becomes a can't-be-missed event. Families travel across hills to find a neighbor with a radio and listen to the day's episode together. The core message of the series is in the title itself. The neighbor is part of my family. He is more than family, because if, for example, you are attacked at night, if you wait for your family who live two hills away to hear that you have been attacked and intervene, either you will have got away with it or you will have died. It is the neighbor who raises the alarm. The neighbor is the really true friend. With the war with ethnic connotations, People begin to look at their neighbors, or to behave towards them, not as neighbors, but as ethnic groups, as enemies. That's when we saw neighbors, people who had lived together for years, people who lived on neighboring properties, who had been friends since childhood, starting to annoy each other, to commit despicable acts that we could never have imagined. On the 21st of October 1993, the presidential palace was attacked. President Melchior Dadaï was killed along with several ministers. Tension erupts and the country goes up in flames. Revenge takes over and children, young people and adults are massacred with guns and machetes. At that time, Adele, from Getiga province, is led in a hall with some of her neighbors. <laughs> So they took all the Tutsis present. They lined us up. They locked us up in the communal house, all the Tutsis. At nightfall, they came to call us in small groups, calling each one by name. So-and-so, get out. And whoever went out, 
never came back. When they got to me, they called me. I answered, and they asked me to show them where Ndadye was. I said I didn't know who they were talking about. So they took my child, and they cut me up all over and threw me in the same mass grave as the others. Je suis arrivé une semaine après. I arrived a week later. That's when the president of the bishop's conference and I tried to build a small group of five that was a little bit broader to be able to kick-start something. To try to get hold of someone, were it only two or three government representatives, it took us three or four days, and they wanted to know if indeed there was a way to see us and save our lives. It was difficult. We went out, we went to all these embassies, German, French, and there were also some who were hidden in the papal mission's residence. We also went to try to gather those who remained. We told them, come on, even if those who carried out the putsch are still in power, we absolutely must meet them. We must show them that you're still alive. So finally, they agreed to come with us. In January 1994, a truce was signed by the different factions in Burundi. Cyprien Nagyamira, of the Front of Democracy in Burundi party was appointed President of the Republic in Burundi. On the 6th of April 1994, he was returning from the summit of African heads of state in Tanzania in the plane of Rwandan President Habyarimana. The plane was shot down on landing at Kigali Airport in Rwanda. The situation in Rwanda worsened. The genocide claimed between 800,000 and 1 million people in a hundred days. For those who survived the massacres, the long road to personal reconstruction and forgiveness begins. François Xavier Garambe, artist and committed Christian, lives and expresses reconciliation through his music. Art is at the service of reconciliation, firstly through the artist himself. The musician or any artist will first start to experience his or her own misery, his or her wounds, and go through a process of healing. By living this experience with the Lord, who heals, who restores me, I want others to live it in a certain way, and therefore also pass it on through my music. In our book, Survivors of Kigali, the part about my wife and I is called Survivors for Love. It is also an experience we had when we came back home in front of the grave of the people we shared the dormitory, and we said we could have been there, but we are not. But why did those others go there? And we followed their mindset, seeing the killers, how they received hatred in their hearts, and then that same hatred generated death in themselves. And then they gave what they had, they killed, they gave death. So I said, 
why did we stay outside these graves? If we are outside these tombs, it is undoubtedly to make the opposite path of the one made by those who killed them, to have love in us so that we have life in us, so that we can give life. So we understood at that moment our vocation as survivors was to be survivors for love. Lina Zidriga from Uganda is one of the most prominent women leaders in the Great Lakes region. Her charisma and dynamism lead her to commit to peace in the sub-region and in Africa in general. She travels across the continent to reconcile populations and encourages women to work for peace. That's why for peace building and reconciliation, our role is bigger as the Christians. And we must take it very, very seriously. The memories that we are destroyed by the war in, the, in our region, we must document. Mm? We must do memory lanes like Rwanda has, uh, but we must do it from a, a, a perspective not of revenge or of trauma. We should make it be inspirational. The memories that were destroyed by the, by the war in the region, we need to rebuild it, especially the good memories. But the baby, bad memories of tribal divide, let them go. <laughs> we don't need those divisions. We need to build bridges, not walls. Where there were no bridges, let us build them for memory. Where there were walls, let us break down uh, them down for very good memory. Let us start afresh. Let us have uh, unity. It's very, very important. We agreed as a family to do a final mourning ceremony 40 years later. We had a mass said, and then there were prayer intentions. I remember that I asked the Lord for strength. I said, by the strength of this sacrifice, I forgive those who killed our father and did not even allow us to bury him with dignity and who plunged us into poverty. We were not able to pursue our school studies as we wanted. We lived as best we could. At that moment, when I said these words, I burst into tears. It was the first time we had this opportunity, and the whole family, my mum, my brothers and sisters, everyone wept at that moment. We broke down. We were able to release our grief. We were like liberated. When we went to court and it was proposed that I ask for compensation for the harm they had caused me, I said, no, I'm not asking for compensation. Because even if they gave me compensation, they couldn't give me my arm back as it was. I would have an artificial arm, but it wouldn't look like my arm. I gave birth to a child. If I asked them to give me back my child, they wouldn't bring back Quintin that I was carrying on my back. It would be a child, but not the one I had. I went within myself. I contemplated the goodness of God. I put all my hope in God, and I chose to free those who had done me so much harm, so that I would bring this harm to a halt and not pass it on to others. After the various periods of war, several artists of the region committed to encouraging dialogue, forgiveness and reconciliation for the healing of memories. Their messages, questions, sometimes disturb, but above all, they witness to resilience and a possible future. The stage of reconstruction leads young people to go beyond their assigned identity. Several of them work on projects to rebuild together. Among them, Jack Morigande, known as Mighty Popo, is one of them. 
He has founded an art school specializing in music. For him, reconciliation is achieved through education and music. Na mahoro na kinuwa mumla yakubak. Bese mumahoro mumga na rakura. Nothing can be achieved without peace. In a country at peace, the child grows up peacefully. In a country at peace, the child will learn more easily. Peace is like an egg. You protect it so as not to break it. In Rwanda, we had a hard time achieving peace. We lost more than a million Rwandans during the genocide perpetrated against the Tutsis in 1994. Our duty is to protect this peace. Music has always brought people together, because our land is Rwanda. Music is our common property, that is, one with each citizen. If there's no music, there are no Rwandans. Since ancient times, during wedding ceremonies, people would sing. When they went to cultivate the fields, they would sing. The shepherds who guarded the cows would sing. So this is our source. This is where we get our culture. Step by step, art is a healing path for the Rwandan people. For example, the Humubuntu Art Festival brings together more than 16 countries around the world. Hope Azeda, the founder of Masherika Performing, brings young people to the forefront to talk about sensitive issues to create opportunities to dialogue. We talk about our stories of hope, uh, stories that connect our own lives, stories that uh, mirror our lives and experiences. And we use these kind of stories basically to create conversations, difficult conversations, or to spark a, a space of, of, of safety. And we've used art uh, to bring communities together, art to, you know, uh, start a journey of reconciliation. Because we believe art is a great tool in, you know, mending broken, broken societies. And art has, has, has the power and has the master key to open our inner beings, to start our own conversations and question ourselves. Is this what I'm talking about? Is it good or bad? I mean, love is good. Peace is good. You know, why not talk about peace using art and see how that feels alone to just look at that. April is a gray month and will always be a gray month as we remember the innocent lives lost. During the 1994 genocide against the Tutsi, art was used to incite hate on radio, in fashion as well. But now during the healing process, art can also be used to do good things, to heal, to be a place where we can come to write all our feelings, where we can come to write all our solutions, where we can come to talk about peace and the concepts of peace and what that could mean for the world. You know, how many opportunities everyone can have if their lives are not at risk. You know, so I feel like peace and reconciliation are interesting concepts to be included in art because it really does allow for the world to be able to see a, a way forward and for people to see themselves in a, in, in a world that they wish for with peace and reconciliation and what they can achieve with that. <laughs> Young artists were among the first to speak about dialogue, forgiveness, unity and the possible peace in the Great Lakes region. Their way of expressing their sorrow is a light for many. Clovis Goy from Congo, living in Burundi, has begun a healing process through painting. His childhood was marked by the exile of his family in Uvira refugee camp in South Kivu. I have to say that I am inspired by the drama. 
First of all, I must tell you that I'm inspired by this drama because I have tried to denounce and express what I experienced through others. And my painting today, I could say it is militant in the sense that I'm trying to make propaganda, to make people hate war and spread peace among them. When I was in Marseille, I did a painting. When elephants fight, the grass suffers. It's a painting that shows two elephants fighting. And in the middle, there is a child without a face, but stuck between the two elephants. Because I tried to express my time in the Congo. Through the painting, I expressed the two camps that were fighting through the elephants, through their power, through their size, and me in the middle of them, I was like nothing. So I'm always inquisitive about certain things. But when it comes across certain questions that are not being answered, I, like a child, I try to ask why? Why would a big man kill a young child? Why would a brother and a brother fight? You know, like a child just asking. So for me, it, all the time, my, that voice is reminding me, are you planting seeds of love? Are you planting seeds of comfort? Are you planting seeds of peace? My dream for this whole, if we can all anchor on faith and believe in goodness and work towards goodness, then we, we will attract goodness because we become what we believe, what we think. If we think in love, we will bring love. If our hearts are dark, we will bring darkness. So we need to anchor ourselves on just good stuff and just have strong faith that this thing is possible. I hope that young people can really have peace and reconciliation in all parts of their lives, not just in the general, you know, peace that you have to have in a country to survive, but also peace in their mind, peace in their family, peace in their relationships, peace with God, peace with all of these things. I want them to really be able to explore that thing because we could have so much peace in the country and still are struggling mentally or emotionally or spiritually and I hope that um, that the youth can find that kind of peace. Lord, you know the suffering of the families who are victims of these massacres. Come and heal all the wounds in their hearts. May your love dwell in their inner lives and bring them consolation. We also entrust to you all the artists of the Great Lakes region and all those committed to reconciliation. May your love become a shield for each of them through the action of your Holy Spirit. From the first letter of John, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love each other. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates a brother or sister is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life residing in him. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. <laughs> 